Okay. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this um, meeting of the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. Um, I'm Councillor Jeff Harvey. Um, I'm chairing this meeting. Uh, normally, it'd be Pippa Halen. She can't be here this evening. Um, my vice chair, um, would you like to introduce yourself, Martin? Yeah, I'm Councillor Martin Kelman. I'm from, uh, I'm a member for Histon, Impington, and Oxford Park. And Councillor Bear Park. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Bearpark. I'm um, councillor for Milton Waterbridge. And I see we also have uh, leader Bridget Smith and um, cabinet um, member for planning with us. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, good, e good evening, uh, Bridget Smith, leader of the council. Uh, good evening, uh, Tumi Hawkins, member for Caldicott Ward and the lead cabinet member for planning policy and delivery. Thank you. Um, would you just like to continue on from Tumi, uh, our officers with us tonight? Thanks. Um, Paul Frayn, I'm Assistant Director of Strategy and Economy. Mm. Thank you. John Dixon, Planning Policy Manager. And I'm Liz Watts, Chief Executive. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, as you all know, uh, we've just come out of a, a very um, extended session of the um, scrutiny committee, scrutiny overview committee, uh, where we did actually cover a lot of subject matter, um, particularly on this um, new local plan and around environment, uh, biodiversity, climate issues. Um, and given the lateness of the hour, um, I'm going to suggest that um, as um, very fortunately, um, the three members making the meeting core at now were also in the previous um, scrutiny meeting, that um, I'm going to suggest that, um, firstly, I cut um, the preamble very short, um, and now um, hopefully um, suggest that uh, if anyone has any further questions that weren't covered in the previous meeting, so it's got to be a new question, um, and please make them very short, um, we can just uh, get this um, done in a, in a kind of probably a record time. Um, so, Councillor Bearpark, do you have another question, perhaps? I just have a couple of comments. Um, one, a bit, one quite short, uh, the other one a little bit longer. Um, just on page 160 or 142, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, there is a diagram showing um, winter and summer increase in temperatures and increase in rainfall. It'd be good if there was a source associated with that. Um, so we understood where that came from. Um, and the other point I wanted to make was related to active travel policy, sustainable transport and connectivity, IST. Um, I sometimes feel that active travel is um, uh, a bit of an afterthought when it comes to development. And I know there's lots of, a lot of work going on to try and improve active travel, but I wondered if uh, it's possible to... Um, uh, the policy is framed in some way around the spatial development of sites. Just giving the example of uh, Water Beach, the spatial framework has the road, the main road, slicing through the middle of the site, which means that from an active travel point of view, um, it means that every, uh, all, all active travel journeys, or a very large number of active travel journeys, have to cross that main road. And I'd like to see kind of some work done on, on more innovative spatial frameworks that support active, much more active travel. Um, that's really my only comment. Well, thank you, Councillor. Would, would any of the officers care to comment on that? Or? Yeah, I think that, um, I think that that's both points are noted and um, my colleague from Victor might want to come in with a bit of further detail, but obviously this is still quite the early stages of that piece of work. Um, in terms of the strategy and that very first stand of the strategy, John, is there anything you wanted to add into that question on the sustainable travel piece? So I think it's fair to say that um, we are still at an early stage of the preparation of the local plan. And you may be familiar with the work uh, looking at Northeast Cambridge, which is at a more advanced stage. So in that document, very much looked at having 
at the station, the connection to the busway and so on, how does a spatial framework uh, take advantage of those modes as much as possible? So we're only at the start of that journey on uh, the airport site, certainly even more so at Camborne with its being a broad location. So we have got a lot of work to do, but I would hope we'll very much explore those issues through those other sites as much as we are exploring them at North East Camborne. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I see we're joined online by Councillor Pippa Halings, who would normally be chairing this. Um, I think it's admissible. I think you had a question, Pippa. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thanks very much, Jeff. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate, really, the congratulations, both on the evidence submitted, but also the way in which the evidence has been reviewed. Because we really got the robust and radical, I think, responses to, to the, the evidence there. But one of the questions that I do have is around the green infrastructure and open space. And it's around the minimum distance um, access to open space per, per resident. And I just wondered, you know, what, there wasn't a policy around that before in, in the Forest Plan that we have, and whether or not we're looking at um, including something like that. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Um, any comment on that from our panel? So, um, one of the issues uh, we know we need to follow up more is looking at open space standards. Um, the green infrastructure opportunity mapping study very much looked at what sort of alternatives there are regarding standards, but it is an area we acknowledge we need further work. Um, it's a challenging area because we know we've got to get the right sort of standards that work for our area because some of the sort of some of the nationally set standards don't necessarily work everywhere. Um, so I don't have the answer for you today other than to say yes, it's on it's on the list. And I hope I think it's acknowledged in the plan that it's an area we want to look at further uh, over the next next period before we get to that draft plan. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Councillor Haynes, for the question. Um, also, I noticed um, Leader Bridget Smith, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to pick up on uh, Councillor Bear Park's comment about uh, sustainable travel. So in it, it's interesting to hear that we're at the early stage of this and there's further work to, done, to be done. So you know, it's, it's re reasonably easy to get in you know, decent cycle routes and so on in the sort of necklace villages around uh, Cambridge City. You know, the Cambridge, the city focused villages. But for, you know, we have a lot of villages such as mine, Gamling Gay, you're know, out in the sticks for which, you know, if you're going to cycle, um, you have no choice but cycle on roads that can be really very scary. So I do hope, you know, moving forward, we start thinking about um, cycleways, sustainable travel routes that actually cover all our villages as well and start linking up um, our, our villages to, uh, to travel hubs. So if we end up with a station at Camborne, you know, I could theoretically cycle to, to the station at Camborne, but I'm not doing it on the 1198 because last time I was knocked off. So, um, you know, it, it'd be nice if we start factoring that in, a, a proper network of sustainable travel routes that are covering the whole of the district so everyone has the options. Yes, thank you. Couldn't agree more. Um, Councillor Khan, did you have a you yes, question? Sorry, a couple you of points, just, okay, just more you. points. Uh, firstly, going back to active travel, um, one of the problems that I found myself, and I think a lot of people find, is that it's difficult to store your, uh, in existing development, it's often difficult to store your, development, uh, your, your cycle. And uh, therefore, people tend not to cycle because they have nowhere to put their bikes. And, and they planning permission that uh, you're planning, you have no planning rights to build a cycle store in the front of, front of the front line of the house, which many people is the only place they can get access. Uh, Scotland has actually moved on planning, uh, um, has given permitted development for uh, smaller cycle stores in the front garden, um, 
And I wondered whether that might be looked at or discussed, at least mentioned as a possible thing that we might examine in, in the future, whether that's a, a, a viable course and what areas that might be. Um, so uh, that's the first question. And the second question is a simple thing about the, um, the, the, the priority zones shown for uh, uh, green zones around, uh, around Cambridge, basically. Um, and there's one area which I, I is missed. It's because, basically, it's, it, it, it's a remote, a remote zone. It's an area which doesn't have really much recreational potential, but it has a biodiversity potential. And that's the area along the southeast of the district uh, on the form, on the clay, or the clay on clay. There's a, a series of sites of biodiversity interest that are, are different woodland from the, what you find in the Gamble Gay area. You know, there's a lot of hornbeam in them, which ties into the woodlands you find in Suffolk and Essex. Uh, and that's not been identified. Uh, and there might be opportunities there particularly for developments take place in some of the small villages for improving the, the size of joining woodlands together. And also, and perhaps we don't know how the, how the, um, the farming system, the support systems go, go ahead, whether we're going to have an input into the decisions of farmers, whether they might be able to support action taken by farmers. So I thought that perhaps needs mentioning somewhere in the, um, in, in the, the local plan, not as a priority zone for recreation, but as a, a a, di a diversity zone, which has is a biodiversity zone, which has its own interests. Those are, those are more comments than <laughs> than um, questions. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. I think I think I note a lot of those things. I mean, I can't comment on that detail, but I certainly would agree that where we've got specific areas of, of diversity in terms of where you're talking around that that diverse woodland stock that crosses over into a slightly different kind of um, regional treescape. I would, I would hope that we'd be kind of looking at some of those specifically, and that kind of relates to the point made in the previous meeting around not just doubling nature in some respects, understanding what the actual uh, makeup of that biodiversity is, and you know ensuring that we follow that up with having you know detail around that and how we can extend that rather than just being kind of broad brush about it. In terms of the sustainable and the other point that you made, I think first, I'm not sure if it was a question around the sustainable study, but I'm sure there's one or two who's got something that we can mention in that. I think just to pick up on the, the green infrastructure point, it's important to, we need to get across that um, the green infrastructure recommendations isn't just for specific areas. There are a number of the recommendations which are more district-wide, and one of the district-wide initiatives is woodland expansion and resilience um, as one of our broader topics, so perhaps we need to find a way of making sure it isn't just those areas, there are wider schemes identified in that prioritisation project. On the um, cycle shed in front of dwellings, that's a really interesting one. I guess that comes down to your design policy, because it's only still potentially require permission, but it's how your design policy would potentially support in appropriate locations, and that might be something to pick up in draft plan and a point we might get comments on through the consultation. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'd just like to make an observation. I'm not really expecting a, an answer, uh, just for brevity, but I, I just noticed that on uh, adapting heritage assets to climate change, which um, is on page 222 of the uh, consultation document, um, and there's some bullet points at the top of the page there, which look as though they might be a sort of embryonic policy statement, which would replace uh, NH15 in our current local plan. Um, and I just want to make a comment that that would seem at the moment to give um, less hope to our residents who wish to make their uh, grade listed buildings um, energy efficient. And I, I, I just hope we can sort of evolve that as the plan progresses, but I'm not expecting an answer. And I think um, possibly at this point I should bring the meeting to a close unless anyone has another reason not to. Okay, well, uh, thank you. Oh, oh, sorry, yes. Um, Pippa, would you like to? Yes, no, thank you. I would just like to um, echo some of the points that I was making point to you, which is the point that I can't find the government in the diversity and inclusion committee session um, around the road on flooding um, and flood risk and flood resilience. Um, so I, I just want to point to you that we would like to work at some point to submit some proposed wording around that. We know that last year there was a recent consultation and then that went to the um, audit office, went to the board, and there were quite a few recommendations on how, you know, if we went forward with yes to get a number of houses um, exposed to flooding with more than double in the next five to ten years. So um, I just think 
we need to make sure that we're being as ambitious as possible around budget and resilience um, also. So I just wanted to support that and make sure that's noted from our set perspective. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Just on that point, Chair, just very quickly, it's absolutely noted. We did take a make a note of those those comments from um, Councillor Bradnam as well in terms of that policy wording around that flood risk. And initially, we don't see any issue with having a look at tweaking that, but um, certainly something we'll definitely take away. Um, and we'll be speaking to Councillor Bradnam to make sure we've got that wording that she mentioned quite right. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Um, Councillor Hawkins, did I note? You, 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 did, was your hand up at some point? Um, uh, no, Chair, I was pointing at Councillor oh, yes. Haynes to make, sure, to make sure that she brought in what she wanted to say. Thank you. So, can I now bring the meeting to a close, do we think? I don't see any objections to that. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, I'm sorry to uh, our officers for having to stay so late this evening, but um, I think it was important to get this kind of wrapped up. So, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>